An article in the Epic Times by Joseph Hanneman. Uh, judge's latest refusal to grant bail looms large for January 6th defendant mace twice by D.C. jail guard. Yeah, having been a felony judge in Texas handling, I don't know how many thousands of felony cases, um, nobody gets more incensed than I do when judges abuse their position. I recall having a, a bailiff. I found out that during recesses, people, he was trash mouth and talking terrible to, to people that I was sentencing. And when I found out, I called him in and said, look, I'm sentencing these people to prison. We are supposed to show the example of civility. When you trash talk somebody when they come into court, it builds up hatred and anger, and they see during the time they're in prison, and it makes them more likely to come back and recidivate. You know, there's no reason to do that. We're going to treat them civilly and fairly and make sure they're not abused, not verbally, not physically. And yet I see federal judges who seem to have the attitude that, gee, I am confirmed for life, so once I'm confirmed, I will do as I please and as I think I can get away with on appeal, and it's outrageous. So I'm encouraging my friends on the Judiciary Committee that there is such abuse by federal judges. There is such abuse by the DOJ and by the FBI adopting Gestapo tactics. They didn't used to act like that. I've had so many FBI agents tell me, you remember how it was in the 80s and 90s. We didn't go break down doors of people we knew would show up voluntarily if we just told them when and where. We didn't do it in the middle of the night to scare families and drag them out in their underwear and alert the news media so they'd be there to humiliate them. And yet, it's been going on. And people say January 6th and think that justifies the worst criminality by the Department of Justice and even federal judges. Because I do believe it is a breach of a federal judge's oath when they ignore due process requirements and they take the position, I'm not going to do anything about somebody that's being abused in jail until I'm told to by an appellate court. So I'm hoping that the Judiciary Committee will even be subpoenaing judges to find out, not belabor specific cases, but to find out what their judicial philosophy is that allows them to avoid due process and to allow prisoners to be punished in pretrial confinement against the constitutional rights they have. What allows and, and provokes a federal judge to act like a dictator in their courtroom? Here's an example. I would not know U.S. District Judge Emmett Sullivan if he was here in the room, but I have read and heard firsthand from people who have had to deal with some of the injustice of him. And I know the federal judge that refused to recuse himself so he could sentence Dr. Simone Gold, even though he dated her and she wouldn't date him anymore. So he looked forward to abusing his position to sentence her as the first woman with no criminal record 
and only guilty of a misdemeanor trespass, he got to sentence the girl that quit going out with him, the woman, the brilliant lawyer and MD, to a maximum security facility down in Miami. He needs to come in and answer about recusal and who he thinks he is above the law that's in the law that a judge must recuse himself or herself if there's even an indication there might be some impartiality there. We got a lot of cleaning up in the federal system to do. And I am glad that Republicans will be able to do that. The article points out, despite audio and video evidence showing former Tennessee Sheriff's Deputy Ronald Colton McAbee did not assault a police officer on the Capitol steps of January 6, as alleged by prosecutors, a federal judge again refused the defendant's motion to be released from the District of Columbia jail pending trial. The issue took on added urgency on September 5th when Maccabee, 28, was twice assaulted with chemical spray by a guard in the District of Columbia jail for not wearing a COVID mask. His wife, Sarah, told the Epic Times, this is just inhumane, Sarah Maccabee said. Doesn't even matter what your political beliefs are, you should never treat some way, somebody, somebody that way. Are we living in the same universe? This is not the America I once knew. McAbee is charged by federal prosecutors with seven January 6th related crimes, assaulting, resisting, or impeding a federal officer, two counts of civil disorder, entering and remaining in a restricted building or grounds with a deadly or dangerous weapon, disorderly or disruptive conduct in a restricted building or grounds with a deadly or dangerous weapon engaging in physical violence in a restricted building or grounds with a deadly or dangerous weapon and committing an act of physical violence in the Capitol grounds or building. And that sounds horrible. But then when you find out that actually, if you listen to the audio as you watch the video, you find out he was helping a Capitol policeman who was down. And yet this judge has the audacity to say, we're not listening to the audio so he could hear that evidence. Why wouldn't you listen to the evidence as well as watch a video that gives a false impression? Why? And then to chastise this guy and punish him even more because he was law enforcement. He should have known better than to assault a police officer, but he wasn't. Well, the judge doesn't want the facts to get in the way. He's too busy being a tyrant and punishing January 6th defendants while they're in pretrial and punishing them with pretrial. People need to answer for the tyranny of our justice system as it's become. And I have no problem, and I didn't as a judge, punishing people who deserve the punishment. And there were people January 6th that deserved to be punished. But it sounds like that corruption continues to grow in the DOJ, the FBI, and even in our judicial courts federal courts, tragic. He'd been pepper sprayed in the jail twice and was not allowed to clean it all off. It's a threat to his health. In a 31, oh, and by the way, this sat in front of the judge the request for bail, 117 days. Now, in our state courts, we make sure somebody has a hearing 
We used to. I'm sure they still do within 48 hours. And if they had other evidence to bring in, we'd set a hearing and have that. But this judge had this matter sitting in front of him for 117 days while the prisoner was being abused in the D.C. jail where there was a deputy warden that had tweeted out, F the supporters of Trump. Well, she made sure what she tweeted was what was being done at the jail. So Judge Sullivan took 69 days after the hearing to issue a ruling on whether somebody should stay in jail or not. What kind of judge is that? And then he dismissed the new video and audio evidence, calling them ambiguities the court could not resolve. Well, apparently the only reason he had the hearing in the first place was because the U.S. Court of Appeals had, uh, was going to require it if he didn't do it. So he did it, but grudgingly. But this matter had gone before U.S. Magistrate in Middle District of Tennessee, and he heard the evidence, saw the evidence, and he, he ordered Maccabee to be released to home detention pending trial after hearings were had in August, early September 2021. That judge said, quote, I do not believe that Mr. Maccabee poses a future danger to the community if he were to be released between now and the time that he resolves this case. And the government, despite my request that they provide me any evidence that he's presented any sort of a danger to the community, have been able to point to absolutely nothing beyond the events around and during January 6th. Well, prosecutors knew they had to get that matter away from the judge in Tennessee where there was more evidence of who Maccabee really was to the core. So they got it up here to Judge Sullivan, who immediately rescinded that order and kept him in jail as punishment, despite the requirement to the contrary by the U.S. Constitution. It, 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 it really is outrageous. You know, if a judge were deciding whether Judge Sullivan breached his sworn oath, that judge could say exactly what Judge Sullivan said to Maccabee. Judge Sullivan said, someone tasked with enforcing the law has shirked that responsibility, and that's why they're dangerous. Well, it sounds kind of like that's where Judge Sullivan is. He has shirked his responsibility to the law and the Constitution, and that's why he's a dangerous judge. And I hope they'll have hearings and get to the bottom of what his problems are with following the Constitution. Now, last summer, well, there were a number of times I, I had met Pastor Tommy Nelson of Denton Bible Church in Denton, Texas. I've listened years ago to hours and hours of Bible study he did. I'm very impressed with him. I love the fact that he loves history so much. And he uses that as he speaks. And I'd heard him uh, online doing sermons to his church. And he would kid and say, and I'm going to include that when I get to speak to Congress someday. So I talked to Tommy. And I said, look, you know, you're not going to be able to come in and talk to Tom, uh, to Congress as Tommy Nelson, but I can pass on your messages. We quote people all the time. Put together what you think would be good to have Congress hear, and I'll deliver that. 